Hey everybody, it's Baseball 435 and I'm back again with my next video. Um, first off, I'm sorry about the audio. I am actually just moved into college about a week and a half ago, um, and I didn't bring my mic. It's actually broken, um, so I cannot use that, obviously. So I'm just using my mic, um, my mic, my laptop right now. Um, but I wanted to show you guys what, I was, what I've been making. Um, so said, I'd say about a month ago, I made, or I started making a networking wrapper library. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, kind of like um, a library similar to those like Cryonet and Netty. Um, but I want to make my own because I, I've always been interested in networking. I want to get like a strong grasp on how it works and how to actually implement it. Um, and I already did have some type of grasp, but I didn't really have a whole background on it. Um, so like a few months ago, for example, I made a tutorial on how to use or how to make some stuff with Cryonet. Um, now, I kind of don't like Cryonet. Uh, the code is very unorganized. It's just an unorganized library in general. If you ever look through the code, you'll probably want to shoot yourself in the face. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's just not that great. Um, and then Netty is also very uh, difficult to use and implement, but it's very powerful. Um, so, I mean, I kind of want to make something in between both of them. Um, so I decided to make my own library. Um, I really don't have a name for it yet, but I do have it on GitHub. Um, so as you can see here, this is it uh, right now. And it comes with, it's open source, obviously. Um, but right now what it includes is it, it's multi-platform to start off with and it supports UDP, TCP, and HTTP. So just like Cryonet, it supports both UDP and TCP. Um, but one of the things that Ashley came up with and at or decided to implement, because um, someone recommended it to me, um, was HTTP, HTTP support um, using servlets. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with servlets, what they are is they're kind of just applications run on a virtual machine over the internet, um, whether it's over Apache or Tomcat or something like that. Um, so that's that's what that is. But then, for example, um, you can use this library online on like the in like a web page, and it'll load information, and you can send information to it back and forth, and they all work together. So I mean, it all works together. It works very very well, and, and every single um, type of protocol um, has the same features uh, in the actual library itself. Um, so those features, for example, are um, encryption of packets and objects. So one of the big things, big things with Cryonet was the encryption like sucked. Like it wouldn't let you encrypt your own packets like the way that you wanted to. They didn't really have an interface to implement your own encryption. Um, so I wanted to do this myself, and I did come up with a way to Im implement encryption. And it's very simple to do. All you have to do is just implement one simple thing. Um, you just have to implement one type of class, which is the uh, I encryptor class. Um, it's very very, very easy to do, um, and it lets you edit bytes that are being encrypted and bytes that want to be decrypted. So all you have to do is implement this interface, and then you just set the client and server-sided encryption method to this, or to your class. So it's very easy to use, um, and it works very well. Um, on top of that, it also includes packet corruption handling. Um, so for those, that aren't, for those of you that aren't aware with um, UDP and uh, corruption handling, um, UDP doesn't ensure that the packet or object is actually going to get received on the other end. Um, so it might get kind of, it might only, some maybe only like half of it might reach there. And if that happens, obviously it's not going to be the object that you sent when you first started. Um, so my engine library actually takes care of that for you, um, and it won't actually continue on with the uh, object if it is corrupted. Um, on top of that, it's also a layer of security, because say that someone is in kind of um, taking your packets while they're being sent and editing them on, while they're being sent, um, this will actually uh, this will actually be able to determine if a packet was edited. Um, so that also stops that from happening. And if it does happen, it's obviously going to throw that packet away and not use it. Um, so that's pretty important as well. Um, next thing is packet streaming. Um, packet streaming, for those of you that aren't aware, and most of you probably aren't, um, what it does is it's probably the most it's probably the most difficult thing to implement for me for my library, um, but it's very very useful. Uh, so say that you have a very big object you want to send over, um, or you want it to be very fast. You want to send it over pretty fast. Um, packet streaming, what it does, it, it actually allows you to split the object into different smaller pieces, send them over, and then re recreate that object on the other side. Um, so I'm sure you can already think of how difficult that was um, for me to implement, but it is implemented, and all I have to do is use one method to send over an object and split it into different pieces. Um, the amount of pieces you have to choose, I mean, you can split into five pieces, or you can split into 500 pieces. Either way, it's going to get received and it's going to get recreated on the other side, um, assuming that every single packet was received and it wasn't corrupted. Um, next thing up is SQL support. So we have support for databases, um, and not just like one database. It's actually um, an interface as well. I use a lot of interfaces so you guys can kind of implement your own things as you need them. Um, I so 
lost in this, Jesus. Um, but say, for example, you want to use JPDC, which I actually already implemented. Um, this is the interface which you can implement. They all use the same type of functions. So I have to just implement that and then um, fill in the function. So I already made an implementation of that for the JDBC um, char, which you can implement um, into your own application. Um, it's already filled out for you, connects to your database, sends the information, etc., etc. So that's already done. Um, so that's just one of the implementations of it. And you can set, a, um, or you can create a database wherever you are. So it's very, very nice. Um, so I mean, that's kind of what is included in the library right now. Um, on top of that, I do have a small tutorial on how to get started with it. Um, next thing that I have to do is sending custom objects. I just have to create that tutorial. Um, but after that, um, I'll probably move on to encryption and databases and stuff like that. So um, that's, that's my library there. Um, now, we aren't done yet. I wanted to show you guys what is capable with it and what I mean, I just want to make something for you guys to actually show you what can be done. Um, so for those of you that are familiar, about nine months ago, I made my own RPG, and RPG, online RPG, and it was it was pretty cool. Um, I got a lot of hype um, from it. It was pretty popular, um, but one of the big things was it wasn't very organized. Um, it kind of got really, really lost in the code. Like, it was just a pain, like, it was just horrible to even look at. So I started, I stopped developing it um, after I realized that it was just, not very organized because I figured if I continued on with it, it would just fall apart somewhere. Um, so I stopped it. Um, but now I'm actually recreating it. So I didn't use any of the old code, obviously. Um, I'm restarting from scratch, uh, but I kind of want to show you what I've implemented um, over time. Um, so I have the server and the client. Uh, currently, I've been working on it for about five days, and I mean like 24 hours, five days, like five days, like four, four to five hours a day. Um, but college kind of made me busy, so it's been over the span of like two or three weeks. Um, just because of college. So, uh, I want to show you what's going on. Um, usually the game is in full screen, but Camtasia actually doesn't record in full screen, cause, so it kind of sucks. Um, but right now, I do have two things here. Um, one of the small glitches that I just realized was when you go into the register and you go back, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, but I'll fix that, that's not a big deal. Um, but right now, we have logging in and we have. Um, Registering. So when you log in, obviously I'm not registered with YouTube. Um, the password I typed in was test123. So we're going to do that now. YouTube and then test123. 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 At test123.com. And I mean, if you like, don't type the same password, like, make, please make sure the password is correct. If the username's already taken, like, John's already taken, um, it's going to say it's already taken. Um, so I mean, that's like the different functions that I have right now. Oops. What did I do? Let me just. All right, so, damn, emails are taken, that's what I mean. All right, so I registered successfully. So let me show you where this is all stored. So it's all stored in a database separately using the SQL support that I've implemented into my library. Um, so that's just kind of one of the functions, that I, features that I'm taking advantage of. Um, so I have player info, player equips, and player inventory. Right now your information is not encrypted, so the password, it's a password right there. I'm going to encrypt it to like MD5 or some type of encryption, but don't really worry about that. I just haven't really focused on it because it's not a big deal, and I'll do that when it's important. Um, but everything's everything's kind of stored in the database. So we just registered YouTube, which is right there. Uh, test to one, two, three, X and Y coordinates, health, blah, 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 blah. Um, so that's that there. So now if we log in and exit out of it. <laughs> Let me just do this now. All right, so YouTube, test to one, two, three. Logs in successfully. So this is the game right now. Um, it may be a little bit laggy because it's the recording software is going to throw it off, and you will see like the choppiness when I move like down here. That's because it's not full screen. Um, damn, like this is just it's the recording software is throwing it off so badly. All right, so let me restart that. Um, but right now I do have a few different things implemented, and I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. Um, so so far as you can see, I do have loading maps in there. Um, this is so messed up. Uh, loading maps are in there though, um, and the maps are actually, uh, I don't have bounds obviously for how far left and right they can go, um, I just didn't put it in because it's not a big deal, uh, until more important things come along, but, um, the map is, is loaded in through 
a software that you use to create the map. So I, it's a software called Tiled. Um, it creates tiled maps for you, and it's very easy to use. So this is the game. All the rectangles you see are all collisions. So when I run into them with the player, it's not going to let you go through them because they're colliding. Um, so it's it's not like tiled-based collisions. It's actually however the, wherever I want them to be collisions, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, it makes things very easy to use. But I logged into John, which doesn't really matter. Um, but like as you can see, I can't I can't go through stuff, which is a plus. Um, so these are the collisions here. I obviously have to work on the FPS and shit. Um, but that's that there. Um, now let me show you what else I implemented. I implemented the text box. So like test one, two, three, it'll talk to people. Um, so that's another thing there. The hello world, the guy that you saw down at the bottom, he was actually an NPC, so he's someone I put in there to test out. It doesn't do anything right now. Um, one of the other big things I implemented was the inventory. Um, so the inventory is pretty cool. This game froze. Inventory is pretty cool. Full screen just throws it off so badly, like so freaking badly, and it sucks. Um, because uh, I just haven't implemented the portion that takes care of different orientation. I'll show you the inventory now. So if I press I, this is the inventory. Um, so inventory is pretty cool. Um, right now I don't have any items in him. Actually, I think one of my characters does. Let me see. I think. Uh, let me try. Let me try. Um, connecting on someone else. This is my other guy. Uh, let me see here. So I have to set a limit for how far they can go. No, he doesn't have anything in his inventory either. Um, but the inventory is very cool. Uh, it lets you. It's all handled on the server side. Let me. Um, that's mean. It's all handled on the server side. So if like you like switch something in your inventory, um, or you move it around, it's actually handled on the server side, and it will take effect on that server side, and then send the information back to the client. Um, so I have two pieces of wood. I have a wooden sword, and I have another wooden sword. So I'm going to show you. Obviously, two pieces of wood and a wooden sword can't mix. By the way, these images are mine. Another works of art, something like Picasso, but. It's alright, I'm getting better images. But this is just, imagine this a wooden sword. Um, so it's so damn laggy. Uh, but say that you have one sword here, two pieces of wood, you can switch them back and forth. Um, you can move them around. It's all handled on the server side, so... Um, so nothing's done by the client. They can't like edit their inventory or anything like that. So um, that's the inventory there, and you can shrink it and move it around and stuff like that. Um, but that's, that's kind of what I have so far. It's only a start, but it's all done with my engine. Uh, my library, which is pretty nice. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy watching what I've created, and, and there will be more in the future to, to show you, um, but I kind of just want to show you what I've made and what I'm capable of doing with the library. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. If you guys do have questions, if you want to use the library, it's going to be in the description below. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.